Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to be introducing you to the Super VFX 200 pack or pop video. This is an excellent uh, transparent video library that you can get. Uh, it speeds up production, you get instant visual effects, um, there's a, a bunch of scenic backgrounds included, and you can also use these videos to strengthen your atmosphere and, and create all sorts of cool magical type effects. So let's go to the uh, video pack that I already have loaded up here. I have it in my Explorer folder. Uh, as you can see in the pop video sampler, there's, no, there's a number of animated backgrounds as well as motion elements. Let's go take a look at the animated backgrounds first. And you can see there's animated backgrounds for fire. Uh, there's landscape ones. If you don't have thumbnails like this, you can just hold control and scroll your mouse button to zoom in and out like that to get uh, bigger thumbnails. So these are beautiful uh, landscapes. Let's go ahead and add a couple of these in first. Uh, the sunset one is a, a nice one I like to uh, use. Now make sure that as well that when you load these in, you want to go to render and render video. Make sure that your output size right here is not 800 by 600, but rather HD. So either uh, 720 or 1080p will do. And then you get the correct resolution when you apply it to the background. You can also press Control G to take off your background. We get this cool, uh, very relaxing uh, beach look with the flowing clouds in the background. So there's a number of these, uh, you know, um, the spring stroll is another favorite of mine. We uh, play this back, you can see we have the beautiful, uh, beautiful smoke effects as well as, uh, you know, floating dandelions and, uh, or whatever you call those things, uh, the beautiful flowing uh, clouds in the background as well. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of the other ones here. Um, oceans, ocean ones are pretty cool. You can use these for like undersea, uh, stuff. Under sea scenarios like this lost at sea one, if you play that back, you can see you can use this for a variety of different scenarios. Um, in addition to that, we also have skies, and skies are some of the cool ones. Um, I really like this uh, colorful skies one, for example, right here. You can see we have uh, some sort of snow falling. It's very uh, fantasy themed, so you can use this in a number of different fantasy scenarios. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the last one, which is my favorite, the Universe folder. Uh, in the Universe folder, there's all sorts of cool um, galactic-type videos like this one right here. Um, this sort of a space phenomenon or whatever that is there, a black hole, not a black hole, maybe a star of some sort. Um, but uh, you can use a lot of these as, as backgrounds for any sort of icon scenario. Um, I really uh, highly recommend uh, using these. Let's go ahead and load in this uh, space... Uh, uh, we'll load in the Space Rage one here. It's pre pretty similar to the Galactic Charm one, just a little bit of a different color. You can see it looks like there's some sort of supernova in the background there. I'll give you a quick example of how you could, you know, use this in a in a scenario. Now notice I can move my um, project around and it's not going to affect the background, so that's stationary. Let's go ahead and load in... Uh, some, there's a spaceship pack here somewhere. I believe down closer to the bottom. Yeah, spaceship pack. This is from uh, CG Pitbull. You can find this in the uh, content store or marketplace. I'll just drag in one of these uh, bombers here. So you can see, uh, whoops, uh, it's quite, quite large actually. We have a scenario like this. Let's load in the blue background actually. Let's go to uh, the Galactic Charm. I like this one. Kind of suits this color, uh, color scheme of this uh, Star Destroyer a bit better. And you can see we can have a scenario like this. If we um, go to our scene tab and take off our lights, we can probably take off the uh, other light there and it looks a little bit, a little bit better. And if you wanted to, you know, kind of immerse the viewer in your scenario, in your scene, what you can do is you can add an additional image layer to this. And the image layers, I'll go into, the, they're not in the animated backgrounds folder. They can be found under motion elements and under the other folder. And let's take a look at this. Uh, there's a data-driven one here. It looks like it's very sci-fi themed. Let's simply right-click and drag this onto our scene. And we're going to import this as an image layer, which is basically something that's attached to the front of your lens. We have other, other tutorials that go into more detail on that. Um, you can kind of just stretch it over your entire scene like this, and then you have this cool looking, you know, scenario where it's, uh, it could be used for any sort of, you know, sci-fi uh, novel, sci or sci-fi uh, video rather, <laughs> novel, and, uh, you know, with the cool backgrounds, you can use camera work to uh, do all sorts of funky stuff. That's kind of an example of how you can use those animated backgrounds along with an image layer, a transparent image layer, which is pretty cool. Let's take a look now at uh, the reveal stuff. So I'm going to just start a new project here and we'll go to uh, make sure we have the same resolution there again, uh, 720p. Let's start a new project just simply showing you how to uh, use the reveals now. So with the reveals, uh, you can go to your folder here. There's actually a folder, a special folder for revealers. There's a number of different ones here. 
Um, you can kind of experiment with these uh, on your own time. Oh, you can also use the cartoon under motion elements. There's also tune magic. So there's a number of different reveals in here as well. I do like the tune magic reveals. Um, they're very creative and very uh, cool looking. I'm going to right click and drag in this C reason one here. And I'm going to import this one as a plane. So you can also import as a plane. You can see you can rotate around it in your scene. If we play back, it'll just be a flat plane like this. So a reveal can be used, you know, to reveal things in, in your scene, like characters or words or letters or anything like that. Let's take a look. I have the VFX pack uh, downloaded, 3D Motion or 3DFX Virtual Studio pack. Uh, let's go to Virtual Studio 2, uh, or sorry, Motion Montage. And we have these three symbols. There's alphabet capitalized, so there's a number of different uh, letters here. This is just a sample of, uh, you know, what you could use. Let's take in a, a letter A, for example, first letter of the alphabet. Now, how do we get this A to reveal, um, use the revealer in the correct way? Let's first of all align this uh, reveal um, in front of the A here. Let's make sure it's kind of sitting right in front of the A. And what we can do is, um, let's go down to frame, uh, you know, something like frame, uh, if we play back actually, we can see the reveal and see how large it is. Um, and so we, we can adjust the scale of the reveal, um, or we can adjust the uh, scale of the letter. Let's do the re uh, scale the reveal up a little bit in this case. You can see there's really high detail on these reveals. Um, they are HD uh, 1080p, uh, so you can use them in all sorts of high resolution projects. Um, but when you when you stretch it out, if you're at frame like 75 or something, what you'd want to do is right click and remove object animation, so you won't have you know your reveal scaling up. So let's go ahead and take the uh, letter now. We can select the letter and let's resize that letter to, uh, you know, the size that we want, maybe something like this. Basically, all we're going to do, be doing is revealing the letter A here. So that looks like a good position for it. And we can right click and remove object animation for that. And what I want to do here is at this point, I want to go to my materials and I'm going to take the opacity of my object. So opacity is right down here. And we're going to take that to 99. And it's not really much of a difference from 100. I'm just kind of lazy to add a keyframe. And then let's go to where the reveal starts, or at the very beginning of our project, and we want to take our opacity all the way down to zero. So that's for one material section there. We also need to do this one here as well. And take the opacity down to zero there. And what we're going to do now is, um, of course, we need to go to that. Uh, so I guess we do have to go into the timeline. Let's press F3 and go into the timeline. And you can see that this is our uh, keyframe right here for our opacity. So we can just place our playhead right there and do that same opacity um, zero for that section as well, for that item rather. So now if we uh, play back, oh, we need to uh, make sure that all the opacities have been set to zero. Let's do this one here as well. There we go. All right. So at this point uh, is where the uh, letter is going to appear. And then so from here to there, we can have it appear. And we'll just have it kind of fade in like that. Turn the opacity up. And on the other material section, do the same thing. Turn the opacity up. And so then we have something like this. All right, so it kind of just appears behind the revealer, uh, which is pretty cool. And if you wanted to, you know, you could uh, extend this a little bit. Uh, you could extend the reveal. Um, or you can also take the size of a letter and, you know, bring it down to whatever value you think. Um, you can scale it down to close to zero. And then at this point here, just go to the scale values over here and then have it uh, at full. I think it's at full right now. No, it's at one. So you need to change it to 100. 100. And 100. There, there's our full letter A right there. All right, so then you have a result like this, and you know you can mess around with all sorts of different camera angles, which kind of wants to show you how a reveal works. Like, all right, so it's kind of cool. Uh, let's go on to the next scenario here, which is uh, basically showing some magic effects. So I'm going to be loading a different project here. I have this uh, Wizard FX uh, video magic reveal here. We don't want to save this current project. Let's take a look at how we can make this wizard do some magic. So right off the bat, there's a, I'm going to just press Control G, turn off my grid here. So we have complete darkness and 
this is what we're going to be trying to recreate. And we have that axe reveal there as well. So this, you know, this can act as a revealer as well. This, um, this magic FX, uh, item, which can be found in the Toon Magic folder, or in the, not in the Toon Magic. It is in the Magic Effects. There we go. And there's a whole bunch of different Magic Effects, uh, really cool stuff. Um, this one here is the Wishful Warning, uh, video. Now I have that, uh, axe at the end, kind of just revealing itself and glowing right there with a the glow map. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's, find the under props let's find the image plane which we've used in this case and let's delete that so we can do the same thing with this um we're going to just start from scratch here i'm going to take that magic effects and i can uh find it where is the wishful warning right here there we go so you can right click and drag in we can uh click and drag we can drag it in as a billboard as well as a plane i just like to use planes um you know if you're using a single camera angle because billboards are always facing the, the camera so it can be a little bit confusing after a while so let's play back here. So there's where our, uh, you know, reveal starts. So what we want to do is when our axe begins to show up here, we want to kind of have our video start around the same time as well. So with our default image plane selected, let's just go to the video track right here. And what we want to do is we want to move the beginning of the video. So just simply take this clip and move it a little bit forward, just like that. And, uh, zoom. Okay. So he's kind of, you know, doing his magic right there, maybe a little bit further back. And we probably want to adjust the position a little bit as well. Yeah, I think we want to scale it a little bit larger. There we go. And maybe move it a little, a little bit over here. A little bit further back. There you go. That looks perfect. And just right click and remove the animation whenever you do that. All right, so then we have something like this. Whoosh, that and revealing the magical axe. And it starts glowing at the end. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at uh, uh, one of the scenarios where you can use off, uh, infographics in the office. So I'm going to load up an office scene here that I've just whipped together here. Um, this one right here. And what I'm going to do is simply just load in these infographic videos onto the screen. So there's a number of different infographic uh, uh, pop videos as well uh, in this infographic folder right here. You can see them right here. Let's load a couple of those onto a computer screen. It's pretty simple to do that actually. All right, so I've already had I already have a couple of these uh, loaded in here. If I play back, just my character looking on the screen, and we've loaded it onto this you know computer panel, and these are just playing one after the other. So what I can do is I can select this computer monitor here, press F3, go to my timeline. Let's go to the video, oops, the old uh, video track here, and you can see that we have these three videos slide one after the other. So let's go ahead and just delete all those. There we go. And let's start from scratch. So if we want to apply these videos to our screen, uh, all we need to do is click and drag them onto the screen. So let's try this uh, left click and drag rather. Uh, let's try this one here. Click and drag it directly onto the screen. And you can see that uh, we play back. There's our video popping up. And if it doesn't apply directly to your screen like this, um, if, if it applies in sort of a messed up way, you may have to go to materials and adjust the uh, UV settings, which we talk about in a separate video. Uh, the intro to uh, video in iClone and goes into a lot more detail on UV settings. So um, you can, like I mentioned, you can apply them right after the other. Um, so this one, you can apply another video right here. And all we need to do for that is just, uh, you know, click and drag onto the same place. And we'll apply that second video. And we can play back. And whenever we want this third video to play, we can just go ahead and load that in. Pointing people right here. And there we go. So now if we play back the entire thing, the first infographic appears. It's be useful for a presentation, you know, uh, whether or not in a 3D world or not. You can use it um, for, you know, uh, business uses or anything like that. Not only in this 3D setting, you can also use it in other settings as well. Let's take a look at one final example here. And I'm going to load in a different project here. Video Fire. So this is how you can use some of the transparent videos in really uh, awesome and uh, interesting ways. Uh, especially the fire and smoke ones here. We're going to focus on those now. So under motion elements, there's fire and smoke right here. A whole bunch of different, um, really cool looking, uh, videos. Uh, explosions and smoke can be used for various scenarios. Um, I do like a lot of the fire ones. They can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, and the smoke can be used for, you know, very, uh, eerie kind of situations. Let's take a look at how we can add this flame onto our scene once this project loads up here. There you go. So believe it or not, this uh, is actually a light tool that you can find under your props, under uh, 
light tool somewhere. There you go, light tool. This is the torch that's found right here. But I've basically superimposed this uh, flame over top of it, this transparent pop video over top. So if I play back, you can see it looks pretty cool. We can have that uh, you know, move back and forth. We don't move too far because this is actually a billboard that's superimposed in front of that torch. So if I you know, select my character and uh, you know, move over to this side, for example, you can see the positioning. Now this is, uh, I've imported this as a billboard. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So let's just take that billboard. Uh, we can do the scene, make sure we have it selected. Yep, and go ahead and delete that. And I can right click and drag in this on fire. This is perfect, uh, perfect pop video for this torch. I'm going to right click and drag this in and we'll load it in as a billboard. And you don't have to worry about where you place it because all I'm going to do is align it. I'm going to select align. And this torch happens to be connected to my character. So we have to go into the character hierarchy here. You can see the torch. And with the billboard selected, align to, align to torch, align to X, Y, and Z, and it'll be placed right there. And you can already see the shadow of the torch. So what I want to do here is uh, use the R hotkey, or just uh, go ahead and press OK first. Uh, press the R hotkey and kind of scale that down to where we want it to be. And make sure that we also have it in front of our torch. Now you can't really see it right now, and that's because we need to actually add some self-illumination. Uh, we can do that by using the material uh, properties over here and adding in some self-illumination. So then we have a self-illuminated fire, which is pretty awesome. And then you can, you know, uh, you probably want to place it as close as you possibly can to the actual torch just to get better camera angles there. So, uh, and then you want to link it to the torch as well. So we can go to select link, pick parent, and let's pick that uh, torch in the scene hierarchy there. All right, so we have a situation like this where we have that fire kind of and of course we don't want to go too far away but uh and you can loop that uh loop that as well so that's a couple of uh, examples of how you can use uh you know pop videos in your iclone scenes let's try one more quick sample i want to show you some smoke actually and we'll press Control shift p change our background to pitch black in this case and uh actually i'm just going to load in this uh, one project here this uh old lady project so this is an example of showing me uh, smoke in use. And we're going to have uh, this old lady blowing out some cigarette smoke just like this. There you go. Okay, you can see she's blowing out that cigarette smoke. Pretty cool. Now, you know, the way we do that is uh, exactly the same as the way we just did it. Um, that billboard again, I've just selected that billboard. We can delete it for now. Um, go to our fire and smoke. I believe it's called Smoky Blast. Right click and drag it in as a billboard. And uh, align to our lady x y and z and press ok and probably down at the bottom there yep and we want to bring it up to our face and play back we can see where the smoke begins and ends simply place it where we want it to be we can scale it down again as well that looks to be a reasonable size and position Make sure it's in front of her face here Oops. there we go and then place it about here and right click, remove object animation, and uh, we want to uh, make the video start at the right time. So her lips begin to purse about here. So this is where we want the slips to begin coming out. So with a billboard selected, put a video and click and drag that video to the correct place. And I think we also want to change the position as well. So it's a little further out there. There we go. And now we should have the smoke coming out correctly. There we go. All right, just a cool little sample of, you know, uh, using the transparent pop video in another different scenario in iClone. And we'll have a ton of other videos that show how to use, like, a virtual studio, uh, use these videos in a virtual studio environment. Um, there, it's an excellent transparent video library. I really recommend uh, checking it out. Uh, all sorts of different videos that you can use for various scenarios, like I've mentioned a few times here. Um, you know, these other ones here are pretty cool too. There's like, um, bloody hands. There's some, you know, artistic, uh, videos that start to appear. Um, we can talk about those in other tutorials as well. Um, but I'd recommend checking all those out, um, and picking up this pack because it's really useful for uh, video compositing. So thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure you check out the forums at forum.reillusion.com and I'll see you next time.